Let's bring in Brett Baer, anchor special report. Brett, good morning Hi. to you. A couple things cooking here, all right? Biden's, Biden's going to be in Philly on Saturday. Kamala Harris is apparently getting a boost, all right? Here's the headline. Politico, Harris gets her cavalry. Top group plans to spend $10 million plus to boost her. Such an investment in support of a sitting VP is politically unprecedented. It reflects the lack of broader efforts that have been made to date to help bolster the vice president amid persistently low approval ratings. Seems to me like a one-two punch coming out this week. How do you see it? Yeah, you're right, Bill. Good morning. I think, uh, you know, President Biden and his team have been criticized a bit for kind of a slow launch of this campaign, despite being out more than a month ago and uh, with a video. And there ha really haven't been that many events. Philadelphia marks the, the first kind of push by the president on the campaign. It's a common place. He went to Pennsylvania and Philadelphia many, many times in uh, the last election. And so he'll feel very comfortable talking to union workers there. As for the vice president, you know, you had uh, Nikki Haley, a uh, candidate in the GOP side, saying that we, the Republican Party, in her words, are going to run against Kamala Harris because yeah. that's who's going to eventually be the nominee. Uh, so that's why you're seeing these groups back her and try to soup up her her ratings. But, Brett, I have to say, even though in Politico they say that this is a, an unprecedented amount of money to, to uh, help boost her, I got to say, $10 million in this scheme of things and this campaign doesn't seem like a lot to me. And every two weeks you get another... That's exactly right. Okay, so could you comment on that? Well, I mean, I, I agree with you. $10 million in the big picture when you're talking like a billion dollars in a campaign uh, is going to be very small. But it is unprecedented because there is this vulnerability that yeah. is perceived that, in fact, Kamala Harris is going to be a target in that there is some thought about uh, President Vi Biden's viability through the term. Yeah, right. I want to move some other stuff, but first I want to finish this off. Do you think Joe Biden should run for president? NBC News, 70% say no. Mm. Wow. And then you've got Sean asking Gavin Newsom in Sacramento um, about this. Do you so think he's third. cognitively strong enough to I, be president? I have conversations with him all the time, yes. And I'll tell you what. You do. I'm dead serious about that. I've, convers I've talked to him when he's been overseas. I've been in Air Force One, Marine One. I've been in the limo with him. I've spent time with him okay, privately. Okay, but you never answered my question directly. How many times is your phone ping a day people saying you need to get in this race because they agree with me that he's not up to the job? Uh, I was uh, I, I, I see That's where a fair you're, question. I see where you're going with that. I'm job. asking. No, I, and I'm not answering. But Brett, the reason we're asking this, you're going to hear this more and more. Do you get any indication from this White House or their political team that he's not going to run? No, I mean, that's not the signal they're sending out at all. That's not the signal that the inner circle of Biden is sending out. But Governor Gavin Newsom doesn't do Sean Hannity's show every day. I thought it was a really interesting exchange uh, and a lot of great back and forth. He also doesn't go to the border and film things along the border, saying that mm -hmm. Democrats need to pay attention to this issue. Um, so I, I wouldn't count out in the big picture uh, that if there is some bump along the road uh, that, that Gavin Newsom wouldn't get in. Um, yeah. I, I think right now the Biden folks are saying he's in. The other thing is that you have reported on this before that Joe Manchin, now Cornell West, they're thinking about a third party run. And I, I do think that in a way that it seems sort of like in a, two years before an election, you think, oh, that's a good idea. America deserves more choices. And then it doesn't really pan out. Is it at all different this year with dissatisfaction with Biden? I mean, as Bill said, 70 percent don't think he should run again. Not, you know, Trump has great numbers with the Republican Party, but in a general election, you know, really tight or even losing to Biden, is a third party a possibility? I think it's a possibility to happen. I don't know if it's a possibility to win necessarily, but it is you know, in the realm of possibility. And the fact that Democrats are really worried, they're worried not only about Joe Manchin and the third party run, but they're really worried about Cornell West and the People's Party. You know, he takes a few uh, points away in some of those crucial states. Uh, now, I should point out, they're only on the Florida ballot as of now, but they'll be on, they say, many more ballots over time. Uh, just a few points, mm -hmm. as we saw in the last election could swing Makes a, a number of those states. So there is concern on both sides for the third party. So here's what West said on Friday. If the Democrats don't want third party candidates like myself, 
Why don't you put poor and working people here and abroad at the center of your vision? Biden was a caretaker president for four years. If he talks like that, he's going to get attention in liberal circles, Brett. People will give him more and more. 100%. Airtime. You had uh, Ro Khanna, congressman from California, praising Cornell West. You have Bernie Sanders and his institute saying that they value Cornell West. You know, the former Harvard professor, kind of left-wing pundit. Uh, he gets a lot of attention and has a lot of goodwill on the far left side of the Democratic Party. So, you know, again, one, two points makes a difference. And Brett, tell us, where are you? What are you doing? What special thing do you have cooking up here for Fox News viewers? Yes, this is the Senate project. We're doing it today, 11 a.m. Eastern time. It streams on Fox Nation. It's we, we started this with this group between the Edward M. Kennedy Institute and Orrin uh, Hatch Foundation. It's an effort to get senators together to talk about how they agree on things. They're different on some things. We started it with Bernie Sanders and Lindsey Graham, and it's right here at the Edward M. Kennedy Institute. Again, it streams at 11 a.m. Eastern time on Fox Nation. We'll have some on special report and then put something together for Sunday at 10 p.m. Cool. But All the right. coolest thing about it is yeah. this discussion on the Senate chamber. Um, uh, you know, it looks exactly like the Senate floor, yeah. and uh, it's really a great environment. It's a beautiful room. We were great. just showing it, and it's superb. So yeah. enjoy. We'll check out at 11 a.m. Yeah, thank a. you for joining us. Viewers should be aware of that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, you Brett. I'm gonna watch that. I love that. Mm -hmm. When he, when we, they were, sh when we were first showing the video, I thought they were in the Senate. <laughs> Felt like That's it. That's how Looked real like that looks. Yeah. Yes, it's very good cool. indeed.